Hi, welcome to Amosmith.com. Today we're going to go further into chronographs. What I want to do is show you the chronograph we're going to be using pretty much from this point on. This is the Crony Gamma Master. And what it is, is you have the sky screens here on this end with the diffusers here. You have a readout. It runs off a 9 volt battery which fits inside of here. This will fit on a tripod. This telephone looking cord is what attaches between the sensors and the readout. And in between the readout and here we're going to put a printer. That way we have a hard copy of the velocities we took. And that's connected by a short 8th inch stereo connector. So what I want to do is get this set back up again and show you how it works. It's fairly straightforward. Also, if you're getting to hand loading and you want to make precision ammunition, or you want to see what your velocities are compared to what the manual says they are, this is the only way to do it. Because when they make their ammunition, or when they do their testing with their powders and bullets, they do it in a laboratory condition. Here, we're able to do it out in the field, and so can you. This is really affordable. It's about $200, $250, and all you need is a camera tripod to get it all set up. So let's get the, a target set up, get this set up, and we'll get going. Okay, now that we got the chronograph set up, we got it. We got the sky screens about 10 feet out in front of the uh, the rifle. We want to make sure that the blast or or any unburnt powder doesn't fly over the sky screens to give us a false reading. You want the sun pretty much straight over your sky screens, because if you don't, what you're going to end up doing is getting false readings. And not only are we going to get an instant reading off of our LCD display here, we're also going to get a hard copy on here. So what we're doing is we're shooting the 220 Swift with the 52 grain hollow point with 35 grains of Varga out of the 220 Swift. So this should give us an idea of what the velocities are at. First reading was 3,612 feet a second. It's about what I expected. Now we look at the, the case itself, look for any signs of excessive pressure like flattened primers or bulges, in which we do not have any. The second shot was 3,691 feet a second. And the third one was 3,713. Now there's functions on this, and when you push the function button on here, what it'll do is it will tell you um, how many shots you fired. So we hit the function button up here. It tells me on the first string, the low velocity was 3,612 feet a second. The high was 3,713. The average was 3,672. Estimated spread is 100.8 feet a second. Standard deviation of 53.11. And a total of three shots fired. So that tells us a lot of things about this. We need to get, even though it's shooting very accurately at 100 yards where we're shooting now, what we need to do is find the powder or the right combination of powder to uh, get our standard deviation as low as possible. We want each velocity, the velocity from shot to shot to be as consistent as possible. That was correct.
we got our hard copy here, which we can take notes on and put it into our into our notes for our load data. We have more ammunition we can test, but here we have the printer attached to the LCD display here. And then from here we have the the eight pin connector, which is basically like a Cat5 bus on a tape wire. And it goes out here to our sky screens. Now when you set your sky screens up, what you want to do is take the bolt out of your rifle, aim down to your target, and look through your bore. If you if your barrel is looking at anything below here or anything from here down, you're going to shoot your chronograph. You need to bring your point of impact or realize that your scope is going to make things different. You need to keep at least the bullet from here to here between these two brass fittings here. And then when the bullet comes across, you get your first shadow here, which starts your timer, and your second shadow here, which stops your timer. If you're using a scoped rifle, you need to adjust this down more so you don't shoot your instrument. And with a handgun, it's about a three inch difference. Just make sure you don't shoot below this more than an inch or above it more than about two inches. Otherwise you get false readings or worse, you'll kill your chronograph.